Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining today, uh, this session. Um, today, uh, we talk about uh, the community efforts that um, we have today in the uh, automotive Linux uh, functional safety segment. Um, and uh, I will explain uh, um, what we think uh, these efforts are from the Red Hat perspective, um, where also uh, Red Hat stands with respect to, to each of this uh, effort and what are the challenges and the next step. Some words about myself. Um, I am Gabriele Paoloni. I work as a senior principal software engineer in Red Hat. I am currently the technical leader for the uh, Red Hat in vehicle OS uh, uh, solution. And my background, um, you know, I joined Red Hat pretty recently in July this year. Prior to that, um, I was working in Intel Mobileye for uh, industrial and automotive uh, solutions. And um, I'm also pretty involved in the Linux Foundation uh, ELISA project where I, um, where I, uh, I take, where I have the um, governing board uh, chair position and uh, I'm also leading the safety architecture working group. Okay. So the agenda for today. Um, so the first topic, so we'll talk about uh, uh, the open source and the uh, uh, standardization approach of uh, Red Hat. And then we go over all the uh, different initiatives where Red Hat is involved uh, so far. So we'll talk about uh, ELISA. Then we'll go uh, about the ISO standardization community. We'll talk about the CentOS Automotive Special Interest Group. Um, then we'll touch about the ARM and the uh, SOAFI uh, consortium. And uh, so we'll talk about the Autosar Adaptive. And, uh, and finally, in the last slides, we'll discuss about uh, what are the challenges in harmonizing all these different initiatives in a constructive way uh, for the overall uh, Linux ecosystem. And especially, we'll talk about the challenges uh, of these uh, initiatives to, to communicate, to be synchronized with uh, each other. And yeah, finally, we'll, uh, you know, there will be questions and uh, answers. So from Red, from Red Hat as a company, uh, all our business is heavily based on the open source, okay? And, uh, and this is true also for, uh, for the uh, automotive segment. There is no difference. So you can see that, uh, so in this pyramid, there are uh, different layer where you know, uh, on the bottom part, we have uh, all the uh, open source uh, projects. Then uh, the, the, the open source projects constitute the, the ingredients that, that, you know, that, that we use as a, as a baseline for uh, um, our uh, Linux distributions. Then we have uh, um, other uh, uh, ecosystem-based uh, projects where you know, we uh, integrate uh, the different ingredients and we uh, also develop, uh, uh, you know, like uh, specific uh, uh, features. And, and finally, you know, we have, uh, uh, we create our own internal, um, our own internal distributions where um, we uh, focus specifically on uh, downstream, uh, you know, business uh, functionalities, right? This is where we differentiate and where we make money. Now, when it comes to the uh, automotive segment, uh, our uh, baseline, uh, so where we start from is uh, Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux and Red Hat Enterprise Linux for Edge. So this is our robust baseline that, that we use and that will, build on, that will build on top in order to, to deliver our uh, in-vehicle uh, OS. 
so now let's talk about the different collaboration opportunities that we have today in the uh, automotive Linux ecosystem. Okay, so the first one is uh, uh, Elisa. Okay, so in Elisa we we discuss Elisa is a Linux Foundation project. Okay, so where uh, we discuss reference use cases, we discuss development process uh, practices. We discuss uh, safety architectures. We also discuss uh, tooling, different tools. Okay, and uh, this is you know quite open with the collaboration from uh, different members. Then another important uh, part is the ISO two six two six two working group. So indeed, certifying Linux poses uh, new challenges. Okay, so. The ISO 262 standard as of today is not suitable, you know, to, 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 to certify Linux. It was not designed for complex pre-existing software component like Linux. And therefore, we need to be able, you know, to, to collaborate also in the ISO 26262 working group in order to find uh, um, new ideas, a new new way, you know, to to standardize um, a new methodology that is suitable for Linux and in general for complex pre-existing software components. Then we have uh, CentOS. So uh, CentOS is indeed uh, a Red Hat owned open ecosystem where that is providing uh, um, uh, an open platform where all the uh, potential Red Hat partners, customer can, uh, you know, prototype uh, and, uh, you know, can, can also deliver new features. Okay. And uh, this is indeed uh, very important from, from, from the Red Hat perspective because, you know, it allows to, to get um, automotive features upstream first, okay, before we uh, integrate them in the in-vehicle OS. Um, then uh, there is also the ARM uh, SOAFI uh, consortium, okay, uh, where uh, that, that is, you know, this is an ARM driven initiative to create uh, a reference uh, uh, architecture for, uh, for the edge uh, with the, uh, specifically for the automotive segment, okay. And uh, indeed, you know, we also recognize from the Red Hat point of view that is really, really important uh, to you know, to take uh, um, um, uh, to, to, to take an active role uh, in this uh, initiative, um, and also uh, last but not least, we have the Autosar Adaptive. So Autosar Adaptive has been around uh, for some years now, and uh, it is uh, uh, indeed um, uh, another uh, reference uh, architecture aimed for uh, to deliver. Uh, um, um, automotive and uh, infotainment uh, uh, application, right? So um, these are uh, all the current uh, opportunities where uh, that we recognize uh, as Red Dot uh, to be very, very important in the automotive Linux ecosystem and where we play and, and uh, want to continue playing the, like um, a leadership role. Okay, so some uh, bit of more details about each of these uh, projects. So ELISA, so the acronym stands for Enabling Linux in, uh, in Safety Application. Okay, so the mission of ELISA is to define and maintain a common set of elements, uh, processes and tools that can be incorporated into Linux-based uh, safety critical systems that are amenable to safety certification. So in ELISA, we have uh, different working groups. Now this, um, I mean, the, 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 this, this picture is a bit uh, um, outdated because there is a, actually, in the meantime, there has been a new working group that, was, uh, that has been uh, created. However, it is still, uh, um, you know, the principle is still uh, valid. So 
On the left, you can see that there are uh, the automotive and medical uh, working group. So these are domain specific working groups where the uh, respective use cases are uh, discussed and uh, are uh, analyzed. Okay, so this the, the analysis of the use cases lead to the generation of uh, requirements for uh, for the Linux kernel itself. Okay, and these requirements are uh, further elaborated in the other working groups. So in the safety architecture working group, um, we define you know uh, we develop safety analysis. Uh, to uh, with respect to the uh, allocated requirements in the kernel uh, development working group that now was I mean uh, that, that now has, uh, has uh, further evolved into two other working groups but so here in the kernel development working group uh, the idea is to discuss how uh, what are the, the best uh, development process practices that we, that we can leverage uh, out of uh, the current Linux kernel development and also to figure out uh, what are uh, best uh, Linux uh, kernel configuration and features to uh, meet uh, you know, the, the safety requirements. And then there, are, there is the tool investigation and code improvement uh, working group that is focused on, uh, um, on, on tools that, uh, that are, can be like, for example, uh, static code analysis tools or the syscaller to, you know, to, to provide uh, fuzzing of test uh, of, uh, and uh, of testing, right? So, and uh, all these uh, working groups working together, what they do, they generate uh, a baseline of uh, evidences, effectively, of uh, best practices, of best configurations of tools that can be reused by uh, downstream uh, vendors, effectively, like Red Hat. Uh, for example, okay. So, um, yeah. So this is, in in summary, what uh, what we do in Elisa. So the, the project started in early 2019, and uh, right now we have grown up from four initial uh, to we have grown up to four premium members and 15 general members. Okay. And uh, yeah, the main focus right now is automotive, but we are also trying to push for uh, other segments um, like especially right now we are pushing for the industrial tool for example okay now another uh, initiative that is very very important as i said is the iso 26262 uh, standard okay so the the ice organization is you know, is hierarchically divided into uh, committees, subcommittees, uh, working group, and uh, specifically when it comes to the to software component, uh, you know, we have the uh, we have the the, the WG8 uh, that is uh, responsible for uh, defining uh, the the best practices and uh, you know and the, the evolution of the standard. For when it comes to the qualification uh, and certification of, uh, of software elements, okay? Um, now, here the problem is that, uh, as I said, the ISO, 262, the ISO 26262, as of today, is not suitable to qualify pre-existing software products and components, okay? So the, the ISO 26262 was initially designed to, um, to, to certify, to qualify uh, either, uh, you know, like simple uh, the software uh, components developed from scratch or, you know, or to qualify pre-existing uh, simple uh, software components. And this is historically true just because functional safety uh, was mainly, um, you know, adopted by simple MCU, simple system. But right now, as you know, with the uh, evolution of uh, um, you know of, of, of the compute of the computation capabilities and uh, with the you know introduction of the artificial intelligence and, and the robotics, so we are looking at you know autonomous driving vehicles where the computation power is uh, 
is really huge. And the complexity, you know, increases together with the computation power. Therefore, as of today, you know, the, the current ISO 262 standard is not, you know, uh, is not suitable and, and must be changed. How to change the standard? There was uh, um, an initiative uh, that is called uh, ISO PAS. The PAS stands for Publicly Available Specification. That was uh, um, this was started in early July by Intel Mobili, and uh, this uh, the aim was to address you know the, the current limitation of the standards. Okay, so and on September 10, you know there was so th there was a, a new working item proposal that was approved, and uh, and we have now entered the paper the preparatory stage. Okay, so there is now a working draft where there, there were all the um, international members of the ISO are work are collaborating are discussing, and uh, from the red dot point of view, uh, we joined the, the ISO PAS. Uh, through the Italian delegation, okay? And I am personally, you know, uh, 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 an active member, okay, of, uh, of this ISO PAS. So, because from our point of view, we recognize that in order to be uh, successful, we need to uh, align, especially on, on, on a long-term basis, Red Dot need to align with the directions that are taken by these uh, ISO PAS, effectively, you know, by the by, by uh, we need to align with the ISO 26262 community. Otherwise, we we cannot we cannot win. Okay. Then, uh, CentOS uh, Automotive Seek. Okay. So, the goal of the CentOS Automotive Special Interest Group is to provide an open source home for uh, uh, Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux oriented automotive work. Okay, and uh, we need also to attract and encourage open development of automotive software between commercial and non-commercial partners. Okay, so and the, the goals of this special interest group are to first create an open source related, uh, an open source software related to, to automotive then to incorporate upstream projects that, that are related to automotive and finally to you know to to build uh, a centos variant for uh, automotive based on the red dot enterprise linux the edge so the idea is that you know we deliver uh, um, uh, a reference freely available code baseline where uh, all the potential uh, Red Hat partners can collaborate uh, with respect to, you know, uh, bug fixing, uh, trying, uh, you know, with respect to uh, experimenting on new uh, hardware platforms, with respect to, you know, um, uh, adding new, new features that are, you know, valuable for uh, the automotive segments. Okay. So, um, as of today, I, I think so. We have uh, uh, so so this initiative uh, started pretty recently. Um, I think it was uh, something around uh, uh, last September, and uh, so we are meeting regularly. And uh, as of today, we have uh, uh, already uh, a repository, a manifest, build instruction. So you are really encouraged to you know. To, to join us if you like, okay? So, and what else? So yes, so we have the, we talked, uh, we mentioned the, the ARM uh, SOAFI. So SOAFI stands for Scalable Open Architecture for Embedded Edge, okay? So this is uh, um, an initiative uh, that uh, aims to bring together uh, uh, different uh, uh, automakers, semiconductor suppliers, uh, and uh, open source uh, and uh, other software vendors. Okay, and uh, the idea is to create uh, um, a, a reference uh, architecture uh, with uh, a reference architecture for the edge, with uh, uh, that can also enable mixed criticality. Okay, so it is a, 
effectively are containerized uh, con containerized based uh, architecture where th that can allow you know mixed criticality between you know um, uh, with, with between functional safety and non-functional safety um, uh, containers right so and uh, so that effectively uh, autonomous drive and ADAS uh, application can run together with uh, uh, infotainment or other less critical uh, workloads okay and this is also quite clear from from the picture so from a uh, red hat point of view we realize that this initiative uh, is quite important and here we are uh, playing uh, a leadership role as in fact uh, we are part of the of the governing board of the SOAFI, okay? And uh, this also, this project started uh, pretty uh, recently. I think, uh, again, also this one was around, uh, in the kickoff was around in September, some, something like that, okay? So, and uh, again, you know, we will continue, you know, to, to collaborate with, uh, with ARM and all the other uh, partners that are part of the SOAFI. To, to continue, you know, uh, pushing uh, and building, you know, this uh, reference um, architecture. So, uh, and last, uh, so uh, AutoSAR. So what is AutoSAR? AutoSAR, it is uh, um, a development uh, partnership of car manufacturers, okay and other companies from electronics, semiconductors, and software that are involved in the uh, automotive industry, okay? So the goal is uh, uh, to deliver uh, a standardized uh, software architecture for uh, uh, automotive systems, okay? And, uh, and as of today, uh, Autosar uh, delivers and maintains uh, two different platforms. One is uh, uh, the, the, the AutoSAR uh, classic platform, and the other is the, the, uh, the AutoSAR adaptive uh, platforms. And so the classic platform, it is uh, more suitable for uh, um, uh, systems with uh, uh, safety criticality that is quite high, uh, up to, to ACB. Uh, however, with the, you know, a computation power that is uh, low, so effectively, it fits well uh, simple uh, ECUs uh, use cases. Whereas um, the adaptive platform is more, uh, in, is more uh, intended for complex, uh, um, uh, for complex uh, uh, autonomous driving uh, and ADAS uh, application and systems. And also it allows to have mixed criticality of infotainment together with the, with critical uh, uh, workloads, okay? And uh, from Red Hat point of view, we are mainly interested in the uh, AutoSAR uh, adaptive platform. And uh, in order to, you know, to, to play uh, a role in that regard, so what we are doing today, so we are, uh, partner in, we are in partnership with uh, uh, AutoSAR vendors, okay? So to, to ensure that our Red Hat in vehicle OS can, fully, can be fully compatible with AutoSAR and also optimized, you know, with respect to, to it, right? So our goal here is, you know, to make sure that our uh, in vehicle operating system is, uh, is usable uh, by uh, any OEM that wants to support uh, uh, the AutoSAR adaptive middleware. Okay, so this is, effectively the, the goal from a, from a company uh, point of view, okay? So <clears throat> in this picture, um, you can see that there are, uh, uh, you know, different uh, uh, aspects of uh, um, a system stack effectively. And uh, you can see that we have requirements, uh, architecture, code and testing, and we have tools. And then, you know, across uh, all these uh, uh, blocks of the architecture, there is the, the methodology, uh, effectively the functional safety methodology, okay? And uh, in this picture, you can see that all the different initiatives fits, you know, 
uh, into different uh, uh, aspects of this uh, of this uh, um, stack. Okay, and you can see that we have AutoSAR that is uh, you know spanning across requirements, architecture, code, and testing. So a fee that is mainly focused on the architecture itself. Elisa, Elisa is uh, is mainly focused on architecture, code, and testing tools and methodology. And then we have the ISO uh, 26262 that indeed is uh, is, uh, is mainly focused on the on the methodology itself. So now these all these initiatives right now are evolving in a sort of pretty independent way. However, they are conceptually you know related to each other. So from the Red Hat point of view, indeed we have uh, our own uh, you know stake uh, into each of these uh, projects, if you like, but in order uh, to be really, really effective, I think, so we believe that it is important to find a way to, to have these initiatives to collaborate with each other, okay? So that, you know, they can uh, effectively um, evolve in, in a synchronized way. Um, I can give you an example. Uh, in ELISA, in the automotive working group, uh, we are uh, evaluating the, the AutoSAR requirements, okay? And uh, we are also, uh, you know, time by time uh, uh, synchronized with, uh, with, with the AutoSAR members, okay? So this is just an example. However, you know, there should be, uh, we believe that there should be initiatives to, to allow uh, these uh, initiatives to, to communicate, you know, to be synchronized with each other. And uh, it, it is not trivial. And uh, especially because sometimes there are uh, licenses, uh, limitation and mismatches. Okay. Um, so to give you here another example, uh, I think uh, it is effectively forbidden to discuss the uh, current uh, material of the ISO 26262 of the ISO PAS outside, uh, uh, you know, the, the ISO PAS task force itself, okay? So uh, it is forbidden, you know, to have uh, like um, uh, an open discussion uh, on that material. So this is a, a limitation, okay? So uh, this is uh, again, uh, yet another example, but, you know, in general, so the point here is that we need to, to find a way uh, possibly to, to coordinate uh, these, uh, these programs, okay? And uh, as of today, uh, I don't have like uh, uh, an answer, like, uh, like uh, a final answer. So, and with these slides, um, I, have, um, make, I have made it to the end, so, uh, if you want to, you know, to raise uh, questions um, or if you have comments, please um, just raise your hand and uh, I will take this. You can also type in the chat, huh? whatever you like.
Any anybody? Okay, yeah, I cannot see that either. Oh, there is one. Um, Masami? Hello? Can yes, you hear me? I, can, I can hear you now, yes. Okay, yeah, I actually wrote the uh, question on the chat uh, of the session, but uh, anyway, uh, the question is, uh, the SOPI is actually the, the read by uh, ARM. So you think that uh, the main target uh, hardware or architecture will be your ARM64? Uh, I, I think so. I mean, uh, I, I mean I, from what I know, this is, I mean, I'm not personally involved in the SOPI, okay? So I cannot give you like, uh, uh, an answer that is 100% sure, but from what I know, yes. So the the, the hardware uh, should be the uh, ARM64, uh, especially because one one of the important uh, um, uh, one of the important topic is the standardization. So, and uh, I think from what I know, I don't think that uh, there is. Uh, um, like so much standardization that can be enforced on ARM32 platforms. But again, this is, take this with a pinch of salt. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. you, okay. So okay. as I said, I'm, I'm not part of the, personally, I'm not part of the working group, so. Do, do you, and uh, uh, do you think that there, uh, what the, uh, or say, or the praise, or uh, what say the meta praise uh, to discuss this uh, topic, uh, continue to discuss this topic. Uh, what, what is the best praise? Do you think uh, you con uh, you would you think that are the or say uh, the summer uh, yeah Saint um, OS C. Yep. Okay, so I think. Um, from what okay, so from what I've seen so far, I mean, I will uh, I would tell you, you know, from from my experience, okay. So from what I've seen so far, one of the main difficulty is the 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 licenses mismatch, okay. So mm. the then okay, so it is true we have licenses mismatches, okay, but there are. Uh, the people are the same. So uh, effectively, I can tell you that some of the people that are part of ELISA are also part uh, of the ISO PAS initiative, right? So there is a, a common subset of people. <clears throat> so now what we can, uh, an effective way could be, you know, to, for example, could be to, to have a sort of a restricted discussion group that could align, for example, ELISA with the ISO PAS, where these people, you know, can uh, can can work as a sort of uh, you know communication channel. Uh, however, you know, bearing in mind that the, uh, the the ISO PAS material cannot be disclosed on the other side. Okay, so it's. Um, effectively, you know, it's a sort of, uh, it should be a sort of informal, uh, you know, um, collaboration. Um, I mean, mm. now this is right now the, the, the way I, I could see this uh, happening because uh, other than that, uh, unless somebody come up with some smart idea, <laughs> I, cannot, uh, I cannot see uh, that. Um, like other for other uh, programs like AutoSAR, okay. So AutoSAR, the, the, the specification are publicly available. So, you know, I I mean we are we can we are open, uh, you know, 
to discuss about them. Okay, so effectively, what we can do, we can say, ah, okay, so these are the requirements from AutoSAR. Okay, how can Linux satisfy this requirement? Okay, and that is, you know, kind of mm. an open discussion that can be, there is nothing preventing that, right? So, um, because, you know, yeah. the, the, but I think that there is some uh, code uh, coding will be uh, required for like uh, uh, implementing that the author in a kernel uh, or a Linux kernel or Linux uh, as a Linux application. Yeah. So that are uh, maybe we need uh, uh, some actual project, uh, let's say open source version of the author or something like that. Uh, th th that's a problem. <laughs> so effectively, I don't think uh, it is. If we do something like that, it could be, from my understanding, that could be a violation of the AutoSAR license. So uh, they, they mm -hmm. were developing, uh, you know, an open source version of the, the AutoSAR. So effectively, these are, you know, the, the kind of, uh, um, you know, the, the kind of limitations that, uh, that 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 we have so far, right? So um, uh, and. Yeah, I mean, I don't have like a, so this is something that we are trying to to you know, to, to experiment to you know as uh, uh, right now. So <laughs> oh, okay, so that's our the big uh, barrier uh, to get into the uh, authors space. Yeah. E e yes, uh, effectively yes. So this is a uh, this is a barrier. Uh, I work because, as I said, I would I, I don't think we can create uh, an open source uh, uh, distribution of the AutoSAR middleware. Okay, but mm -hmm. there is nothing preventing uh, something like uh, uh, I give you an example. Okay, so so AutoSAR mandates to have uh, an health monitor, right? So, so, and, um, you know, an important part of the health monitor is the, the watchdog, right? So then we can mm -hmm. say, ah, okay, we can leverage the Linux watchdog subsystem in order to mm -hmm. support the AutoSAR watchdog. And then we can say, okay, but can we rely on the, on the, on the Linux kernel watchdog subsystem? What are the challenges? Okay, so we can do this kind of analysis, right? But, um, you see what I mean? But, the point is we cannot, I don't think we can uh, build uh, an AutoSAR middleware, right? We can, but, but we can discuss, you know, what are uh, the challenges in having uh, the operating system to support the, the AutoSAR middleware. We can do that, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Done. Uh, can can we enable uh, Dan uh, to to speak? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. No, I just found this discussion very interesting. Um, the uh, I just want to share my experience. We uh, at AGL we tried to collaborate with Autosar, um, but it was not possible because obviously we're not a member. And so we couldn't get access to any of the artifacts, uh, any kind of documents, any kind of spec or any kind of anything. <laughs> um, so how do you propose that this would work like in an open source context um, with AutoSAR? So the, the specs are, are, are publicly available. So, you can so, so I'll give you an example. So we, when we were in, in discussion with AutoSAR, they requested that we investigate whether we would adopt um, AutoSAR coding standards. And I thought it was a good idea. I said, okay, let's, let's do that. Can we have the coding standards? And they told us, no, <laughs> we, we're, we can't, we don't have, a, you know, we can't give you the coding standards. And so... I don't know what you mean by the specs are fully open, and I guess it's it, not everything is fully open. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, probably I don't know if they have like a sort of uh, 
tool uh, to, to check, uh, uh, you know, the, the compliance of the code. So they have uh, um, an AutoSAR C++ uh, uh, guideline mm -hmm. that is uh, freely available, that is um, the, the specification, uh, where you have uh, a mapping to all the MISRA uh, checks that okay. uh, must be satisfied, okay? I, I can point you to, to that anyway. I mean, it's, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. It's I, I, like, I actually uh, appreciate that, yeah. Uh, and uh, oh, on top of that, uh, I, yeah, um, I, I don't know. So what, I mean, from the Red Hat point of view, what we are doing, uh, we are collaborating directly with the AutoSAR vendors to effectively to, 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 you know, to, to overcome this uh, this problem of uh, you know of, uh, of being out of our members effectively, right? I see. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah. So to, I told. I, I mean, my understanding is that all the specification and the requirements are publicly available. And, but I mean, I, I understanding. I'm sure because I downloaded them by myself. So. <laughs> 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 so and uh, yeah, and I can point you to the latest release, um, the yeah the twenty dot eleven release, I think. So, okay. uh, yeah. So and as I said, the one thing that it is doable for sure is go over the specification and the requirements and uh, and you know thinking how the the, the OS can be. Uh, compliant to this, then indeed, you know, the practical challenge is, okay, but we cannot get, we cannot build an auto reference middle way. Yes, we can't. I don't think we, this is possible, right? Yeah. So effectively, we cannot do, you know, like the, the next step of, you know, enabling a community, like an open source community for, for, uh, for AutoSAR, that, uh, that is a challenge, right? Yeah, I think it's impossible. I think actually, I think so. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> to be perfectly frank, yeah, I don't think it's possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Okay, so, right. So by the way, since we're, we're talking about the AutoSAR C++ uh, uh, um, guidelines, so this is uh, the, the publicly available spec so it's public you can click on the link and download them uh, so if there are no more questions then uh, i would like to really thank you all for attending uh it was my pleasure to you know to 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 present, uh, you know, to, to lead this session, and uh, I wish you, you know, a very nice continuation of the open source summit. Okay, great. So. Thank you guys and uh, have a nice day.